Hello, Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Hangout with ST. She's Alyssa. And he's Arianto. And Hangout with ST is a weekly show where we bring you top stories of the week. Anything that is local to everything that's happening around, around the world. world. And this <laughs> episode. <is> episode. Because <laughs> usually you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sir. And this is episode 86. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, almost 100. Almost. And that is why we always say every more. week. Two more weeks. In. No lah. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. 14 weeks divided right? by like four, that's like... Three months or so. Mm, thanks. Yeah, three months or so. Close to four months. Close to three and a half months, in fact. Trust me, Nian is better than that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, by next year, we would hit the 100th episode. We would. Yeah. And as always, we are coming to you live from the Straits Times newsroom. So do leave your comments and we'll read it later during the show. Mm, and we are also uh, on social media. We have our very own Instagram we and do. Our, our email. email. So you can uh, get in touch with us, slide in our DMs, mm, say and, hello uh, to us. And Yan will reply. <laughs> And I will reply, yeah, yeah I have been. But it's just that I've realised that Alex Lee hasn't replied us in a while. Oh, hasn't maybe, he, maybe he's been busy. I suppose, Alex, yeah. I suppose. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about, of course, uh, the famous or infamous SG Nasilama Telegram uh, chat group. Mm -hmm. And also the dark side of cyber privacy, yeah, I yep. suppose. Yep. yep. And then also we'll talk about what Sharon Ow did you know, when she emailed her colleagues or contacted her colleagues after yeah. office hours. Was that, is that a big deal? Yeah, Should it be exactly, a big deal? right. I mean, in Singapore, voila, 12 a.m. or so, still get emails and all that. Yeah, still text me. what? <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, we'll go on to positive vibes to spread some positivity. Mm -hmm. And then we'll end things off with, uh, in fact, it is a new segment. It is. Uh, so we kind of revamped Facebook Face-Off into Game of Memes. Yeah. That's a lot more fun, I feel. Yeah, correct. Uh, we had a tie last week. Yeah. Uh, this week, I think you might win. You think so? I think you will. Yeah. So you know you will. Yeah, stay you tuned know. till the end to kind of like know what is this game of means. So how has it changed? Yeah. How does it differ from uh, the previous one, which is uh, Facebook Face Off? Mm. Right? Okay, let's see whether we have any comments right here. Okay, let me log on. Hmm. Mm. Let's see. Eileen Tuo says, How can I get to that place? What place are you talking about? Okay. Let's see up. Yeah. Muturaj Rahman says, Respect friends, sweet and evening. Very great, your news network, Service Watch from India. Oh, hi. Wow, all the way from India. Yeah, all the way from India. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice to see you. Uh, let's Should I see. log into the YouTube? Let's yeah, see, see, see what's yeah. happening at YouTube as well. So, uh, let all your friends and family members know, right, that we are online right now. We are online on Facebook, on YouTube and also on Twitter. Yes. As well, right? Yeah. All three platforms now. So, yeah, you can just go onto any of these uh, platforms, say hi, but more importantly, of course, partake in our conversation. We want to mm. know your thoughts and mm. your opinions on our topics today. Mm. Let me just say hi to people who are on YouTube. Okay, sure. Oh, okay, we have right here uh, Samuel Chua. Hello, hello. SPH just published that they'll be laying off about 70 ish people from the media division. Hopefully, you all are not affected. Hashtag mm. positive vibes. Let's, Hashtag not, let's not talk about retrenchment. Yeah. <laughs> right oh, Ilin is asking, hang out with ST, how can I get to that place? get to hang out with SD. Meaning our Instagram? So, it, is it our Instagram? <laughs> or our email? Hang or on. you want to be here? Like in the set with us, on the set with us? Ah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe, to yeah, you have to come down to the fire. <laughs> okay. Now, moving on to our first segment. Are social platforms responsible for ensuring cyber hygiene? And how much of what we share online is actually just for the intended audience? Now, even with encryption, how truly safe are we in cyberspace? Mm. So there were some questions that popped up for us when uh, we were following the reports on the SG... Nas, I almost say SG Lemak, but SG Nasi Lemak <laughs> Telegram chat group. Now, the chat group of, uh, you know, if you haven't already known, was used to circulate obscene materials and promote vice activities, including sexual services, uh, uh, sexual drugs, drugs. Yeah, and then also vaping, e vapes, mm. illegal products, right? Now, the police had received several reports against the chat group between March 15 and October 3rd this year. Mm -hmm. And four people have been charged so far. Two of them are teenagers, 17 and 19 years old. Yeah. So, screenshot of the uh, group uh, chat, right? The chat group mm. uh, suggests that there are over 44,000 members. That was insane. Yeah. Was and it's just, and it was started slightly like over a year ago. About a year ago. And um, it got. Uh, popular. Yeah, and membership spiked up uh, because more people were aware of yeah. it. And this is despite having to pay a $30 entry fee. Yeah, it's like cover charge. La. Very, uh, very enterprising. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> the people who started this. But I'm quite surprised how they actually managed to monetize it like that. So, so what, you want to join, you pay $30 or what? 
Well, I, we need to ask them. Yeah, right? the, the only yeah. way to find out is to ask them. That's <laughs> why, yeah. So, you know, uh, but of course, the, the reason why, you know, Telegram is used, uh, they, they do... Why they use it on yeah, Telegram. Because they say that there's end-to-end -end encryption, right? Yeah, and, mm. and we all know that Telegram, it's, uh, you can share things, it's encrypted. So basically, Telegram won't know what you're sharing. Only yep. the person who receives what you share will, will get it. So, um, that, that got us thinking a lot about privacy issues as yeah. well. Correct. And in fact, Telegram in their uh, privacy policy also, mm. they said that as well, right? Mm. They mentioned uh, when you send photos, videos or files via screen, secret chats be, uh, before being uploaded, each item is encrypted with a separate key not known to the server. So the server wouldn't know what is yeah. it you're sending. And not to forget, um, you don't actually see the person's real name or their telephone number. You just see the user ID. So yes, I think that's yes, the yes. big draw as well. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. But uh, of course, then, you know, with this, when such uh, incidents happen, you know, mm. uh, then what happens? Yeah, because we were thinking, because okay, I'm not a Telegram user, yeah. uh, I'll say it up front. So when we first heard about it, I was like, how can Telegram not know about this? There's like exactly. 5,000 people. Is there no one on the back end? Or I was just assuming, is there someone on the back end like monitoring what's going yeah. on? But the thing is that because it's encrypted, there's no way they would know what sort of content is being shared in that group. Exactly. So that was then, I felt like, ah, okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. That's why it was like under the radar. Correct. So, People only knew about it when it was being shared on Twitter, right? So mm. someone who was in the group, she mm. shared and then she was like, unhappy mm. about it. So mm. that's why we know about it now. Mm. But of course, you know, then uh, the question is people say, okay, why don't you screen the content? But the thing is, it's supposed to be encrypted. Yes, and if right. you screen for such like vice content, mm. then you need to, then everyone else has to be screened as well. Yeah. But and that's not the point of that's not the selling point of Telegram in the first place. Correct. And then a certain right. degree of privacy has to be compromised, yep. right? Yep. Are we really ready for that now? To discuss mm. uh, this further, we have uh, an expert. Dr. Shoba Vadani. Now she is the lecturer at the Department of Communications and New Media from the National University of Singapore. Can we welcome her? Yay, let me scoot over. <laughs> hi. 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 Hello. hello. <laughs> okay. So maybe you wanna introduce yourself to um, our audience. Anything you wanna say? Um, well, you've pretty much said it. But perhaps what I will do is add that. Um, my research is mainly in the area of digital media cultures. Mm. So I'm very interested in understanding the sorts of relationships that people develop with technology and the kinds of um, maybe, you know, structures yeah. that shape those relationships and interactions yeah. that people have with technology. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so, so uh, Dr. Vadani, you know, I think let's just cut to the chase. Let's okay. just go in, right? People are saying, you know, mm. Yes, Telegram should be responsible because this is something that is quite similar to that whole Facebook saga as well, where yes. Facebook was saying, what well, was, uh, you know, it said to, hey, you need to uh, screen content that is being mm. shared on Facebook. Mm. And then, of course, Tumblr also recently, there was a Tumblr ban on NSF, mm. uh, NSFW yes. posts yeah. as well. Yeah. So, should the owners be on platforms to practice cyber hygiene, you know, to police comments, content, and all this? So I think, actually, that's quite an interesting question. And I think one of the things that perhaps we may need to understand mm. is that, you know, when you, you use the term cyber hygiene, yep. which I find a fascinating term, implying that there's something dirty about people, you know, doing stuff in cyberspace. Mm. But we do also need to remember that there is a lot that people are doing apart from, uh, you know, things like sharing, leaking nudes and things like that. Mm. So. Um, given that then, the idea that tech corporations should be responsible, right, for what they have created, yeah. it takes us back to, you know, Mary Shelley's novel on mm. Frankenstein, mm -hmm. right, that the person who has created the monster, monster is, yeah. is ethically responsible for the actions of the monster yeah. after that. Yeah. Except that when it comes to Facebook and uh, other, other platforms, yeah. sometimes the monsters are us. Mm. You know, and I think that what happens then is certainly the tech corporations do have a lot of responsibility. Yeah, and they certainly do because they've created this archi this architecture, they've programmed in the affordances. The affordances means the sorts of resources, yeah. right? And people use these resources in different kinds of ways. Yeah. So yes, there is some responsibility, but. I think that we cannot also say that it is only this line of defense yeah. that 
is viable mm. because you also have people who are using these platforms. Yeah. You have people who come across this kind of content, yeah. people who see when something is not right. Mm, mm. And so one of the things a lot of the tech corporations have tried to do is to put in sort of community self-policing right. in the sense, you know, report this yeah. if, it is, if it is something uncomfortable for you, report this if there is, yeah. you know, and we'll look into it. Yeah. So I think it, it takes place on a few on a few levels mm -hmm. you know mm. so do you think telegram should open itself up for regulation so you um, earlier we were discussing you brought yeah. up an example of apple in the u.s mm. um, and the That's state right. yeah. regulating it yes so this is the thing right we were talking about how um a few years ago mm. uh the u.s government actually wanted they were not very happy with apple encrypting so heavily all the yeah. data right apple iphones were the most secure yeah Right, because it was a closed system, right? That's what they said. Exactly, it was a closed system. Android and all that, yeah. Right, so they wanted Apple to build that back door, and Apple held the line for a very, very long mm. time. Mm. So, in a sense, then now the question comes is that the position that Telegram is placed in? Yeah. So, there's no easy answer to this, right? Because as we know, the encryption is the same encryption that enables criminal activity to take place. Mm is also the very encryption that allows activists, for example, yeah. right, to, to run their campaigns without disruption, mm. you know? So it is one of these double-headed kind of creatures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the question of whether Telegram should provide this kind of in, you know, and is superseded by the question of who then is going to be the one yep. who takes charge for entering that back door and you know um, policing what is going yeah, on. Yeah. Again, for those of you who are watching us uh, at home, right, uh, we are talking about the issues of uh, cyber security and privacy right, in the cyberspace mm -hmm. uh, following reports of, of course, the SG Nasi Lemak uh, Telegroup. Uh, Telegram, sorry, mm. uh, chat group, and we have uh, Dr. Avadani uh, here. Now uh, she's from uh, the communication, uh, the Department of Communications yes. and New Media from NUS. You have to kind of like shed some light. So again, for those of you who are watching us at home, if you have any questions at all uh, with regard to cyber privacy, mm. right? Do you think that uh, Telegram or any social platforms should be responsible in terms of policing content? You know, mm. of making sure that vices don't happen, mm. or at least you know policing on, on these devices. How can we control them? How we can control them, right. yeah. So the other big question is, of course, um, does true privacy exist in cyberspace? Mm. So this is, you know, one of those, uh, those fun questions to ask, right? Because yeah. you have to really unpack the question, yeah. right? So when we say true privacy, what does that mean, mm. right? And if we mean, by true privacy, we mean the sort of privacy that is total, complete, and universally um, available to yeah. people, then I don't think there has ever been something like mm -hmm. that. I think mm -hmm. it is an illusion. Mm -hmm. So um, privacy has always been about power, okay. right? That some people like elites, for example, have more uh, access to resources that allow them privacy. Yeah. You can think in terms of space, yeah. right? That if you're very rich, you not only have a big gate, you have a long driveway, yeah. right? You have a big door, you may have grills, you have security systems. So there are many, many, many resources for you to protect your yeah. privacy. Um, whereas, for example, we know at the totally other end of the scale, you have people who, um, you know, have to open up their entire lives, you know, let's say to state organizations mm. because, you know, uh, they may need certain resources, right? Mm. Mm. So I just one of the things we need to understand is that we have to unpack this a bit and yeah. understand that there never probably has been true privacy. But having said that, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be disingenuous here. Yeah. Having said that, many scholars will agree that the scale of privacy loss that we have now mm. Mm. is unprecedented. Mm. You know, especially given that we did go through a period when privacy was held as very important. Yeah. This is the thing. You know, yeah. we didn't jump from the Middle Ages to now. Yes. You know, we yes. went through a period when yeah. privacy was very important. Yeah. So then the question we have to ask, right, is that if this is the case, actually what are we losing? 
Yeah. Right? What are we losing? And we were having that discussion just now, mm. and I was saying that um, uh, privacy and trust are very heavily correlated. Yeah. The more privacy people have access to, the more trust they have yeah. in society, yeah. in other people, yeah. and so on. Yeah. And this is very important for a, for a democracy, for a functioning democracy. So we lose, when we lose that trust, then we can see it happening in many countries in the world. Mm -hmm. you know? So where are we now when it comes to privacy, right? We say that there's never been such a thing as true privacy, but also privacy, even as we understand it, we seem to have really lost it. Mm. So there are some people um, you know, who say that if we look at privacy as confidentiality, mm. being able to keep things in our life secret, confidential, yeah. Yeah. then yeah, we are here, we are reaching the end of that phase. Yeah. You know, the canary in the coal mine died long ago. Yeah, yeah. You know? So then people are saying maybe now we need to start thinking of privacy in a different way. And what way would that be? So they use the term fair use, okay. right? That, okay, a, a, and this is, this is, of course, a lot of the privacy work mm. is not done in the field of people being able to keep things private from each other. Right. A lot of the work in the field of privacy and tech is yep. done from the perspective of citizens okay. being able to keep aspects of their life private from tech corporations mm, mm. and the state, mm, mm. you know? Mm. So that's why when they say fair use, what they mean yeah. is that, yes, citizens, you know, we, we know this when we use these tech systems and all that, yeah. we know we, there's no choice, you have to give your data away. Yeah. But you at least maybe can have some faith, mm. some trust that the organizations you're giving it away to yeah. have very strict guidelines in place for what constitutes fair use. Right. Mm, that's okay. why the whole Facebook thing when they misuse our data and they yes. were selling it, there was a big no, no. That's yeah, right. right. That's right. Yeah. There was a big hue and cry about it, as yeah. there should have been. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And you know, uh, you also talked about. Uh, so when, when we were discussing earlier, you know, uh, in in the show, uh, then we are, we look at you know where is that balance then, mm. right, between privacy and policing, right, and mm. regulations. Mm. Is there a because. And, and you said it also uh, earlier on that we, we live in, in an environment now where you cannot be completely not online as yes, well, yes. right? Mm -hmm. There must be some degree of, of presence yes. uh, online. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where is, is there a balance? I know, right? I mean, this is yeah. true. I, I don't know if you're aware, there, there, if you've read this novel by uh, Dave Eggers called The Circle, and it was made into a movie as well, okay. starring Emma Watson. Okay. And one of the things, the premises of that book that I found fascinating, mm. right, is that it posited like that there was this large tech corporation that was kind of like Facebook plus Twitter plus Instagram. Yeah. And they called it the circle because they wanted it to totally take right. control, you know, right. people's lives. Like everything people did had to be shareable, wow. had to be okay. visible. You know, had to be postable. Oh, that's mm. my nightmare. Kind of <laughs> right, right? Yeah, yeah. Which tells you that actually now we still do have some agency and some yes, privacy. Correct, so you yeah, don't have to yeah. worry that everything yeah. has gone to hell in a handbus. Yeah, you know? Yeah. But so there's a scene where there is one character who doesn't want to get drawn into the circle. Yeah. And what ends up happening is that the tech corporation is so unhappy that there's one person who is refusing to comply yeah. that they he's trying to drive away, they send drones. Okay. You know, and it's not like evil tech corporation, it's people. You know, people actually, uh, social media users, the yeah. users of the circle, yeah. come on, come on, I think his name is Mason. Okay. You know, uh, Egging, just just yeah. come, you know, come in, it's okay, there's yeah. nothing wrong, come yeah. back. It's like and a he, cloud. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And in the end, he drives off a cliff. Yeah. You know, yeah. so m my point here, right, is that we may not be able to avoid being online, mm, mm. but we are not at that situation where there's nothing that we can do. Yeah, yeah. We still you have know? a choice, right? I, I think there are a couple of things. One is that we have a choice. Mm. Two is that there is a space, um, you know, in terms of having a public conversation mm. about what are the kinds of social norms, mm. what are the kind of government regulations yeah. that we want around tech corporations. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that very often we think in terms of, yes, individual users, yeah. right? But individual users are also citizens, yeah. right? 
Yeah. And I think part of the thing is to perhaps participate more actively mm. in conversations about technology. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, uh, Prof, you know, going back to yeah. uh, the SG uh, Nasilama yes. uh, Telegram group chat, right? Uh, of course, you know, when, when uh, people knew about the reports and all that, netizens have expressed sympathy for victims, for the victims yeah. saying that, you know, oh, uh, such a poor thing, you know, because their pictures are uh, mm. splashed, you know, on online and all that and mm. it's being shared. But some netizens also have actually, in fact, put the blame on the victims yeah. saying that, hey, if you've put these pictures on social media, yeah. then, you know, it's up for grabs, right? So the question then is, does it mean that as long as things are online, they're just up for grabs? And what happens if, let's say, okay, yeah. if it's up on public uh, or open accounts, Instagram profile, it's okay, right? We understand that, okay, then, you know, there, there's not much of a case to yes. fight for. Yes. What happens if, let's say, my account is private, I post it up with an, uh, to an intended audience, mm. but it still gets leaked out? Yes. Does yes. that mean that everything that I post up, you know, online is just up for grabs, regardless of whether it's being privatized or not? Yeah. Mm. So this is this is an excellent question, right? Because yeah. the easy way out is always just to tell people, well, you know, if you don't want your stuff to appear, yeah. you know, beyond in spaces beyond yeah. your control, just don't post online. Yeah. But you know, this ignores the kind of agency, the kind yeah. of freedom, the kind of joy and pleasure mm. that people often get. From taking selfies and, mm. and you know posting mm. pictures of themselves online, even as a as a new form of sexual expression, to send intimate pictures of themselves mm. to somebody that they're in a in a relationship with, right? So, this is a part of it. The joy, the pleasure, is part of it yeah. as well, right? Yeah. So we cannot just say, well, you know, then don't post online, right? But I think that one of the aspects that's not often talked about, you know, once the victim blaming starts coming in, yeah. one of the aspects that is not talked about so much is, okay, look, this was posted in a private account. Yeah. Ostensibly, the audience that I'm posting to are people whom I know and trust. Yeah. So what happens if it leaks means there is somebody here who doesn't take mm. my privacy seriously yeah yeah who doesn't take it you know that content seriously and so i want to come back to this idea of the social norms yeah then, you know because the, when the conversation is always about the tech mm. or when it comes to what people can do it's always about don't post yeah or be careful yeah right but it's doesn't take into account the way interpersonal relationships are changing. Yeah, yeah. And I feel that, you know, if I were to, if somebody were to come to me and say, okay, but what do I do then? Yeah. Right? And I feel like part of the thing is maybe about constantly negotiating that mm. with your trusted circle. Mm. So we have a comment right here yeah. uh, from Ziljian Tan that says, then again, cyber privacy is a choice. You choose how much of yourself yes. you want to expose on the internet. Also, ease of access of information also mm. contributes to the extent of cyber privacy. If our information gets leaked, mm. should the in individual be blamed too? If our information gets leaked? Yeah. Should yeah. the individual be blamed too? The, the one who leaked? Uh, Which individual? The one who shared or the one who I, leaked? Uh, okay, yeah, it's not... I mean, we the can one who shared. The one who the shared. One who yeah. shared. Mm. The one who shared. So, yes, there, I would say there is an element of choice. Mm. Right? There is an element of mm. choice, of course. Um, but the thing is that choices are not made in a vacuum. Mm. Mm. You know, as human beings who are social creatures, yeah. right? our choices are made based on many things and although we live in what one sociologist calls a risk society yeah. right where everything is viewed through the lens of risk yeah. it's exhausting yeah. to always live as though you must be hyper vigilant yeah. you know it, it makes people depressed and anxious yeah. so i think true if it gets leaked then certainly that is when everybody you know pulls in and has to ask mm. themselves oh my god you know should mm. i have posted that but at the same time I do think that more emphasis needs to be placed on the people, you know, mm. who are mm. doing the leaking. Mm. And we're not talking about this in a general way. I mean, mm. I think we know that certain types of leaking mm. are more devastating yeah. Yeah. than other types of leaking. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where it crosses over into a crime.
Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think I didn't. Yeah, you're right. I think at the end of the day, it's really about the balance approach, right? That you know, um, on one hand, it's excess of information mm. and all that. But on the other hand, also it's human agency. Also, it's you it's don't live in a vacuum, well. right? Yes. It's also mm. it's also up to the users. It's, you know, yeah. decisions when you make certain decisions and all. It's not as though you make decisions in a vacuum. Yeah. You would have thought things through yes. and whatever other things are at stake as well. I mean, yes, sometimes not. Yeah, sometimes and sometimes we know that yeah. people don't, don't, are not always aware. Yeah. You know, for example, these, sometimes the, these algorithms become like black boxes mm. and you don't know what are the decisions that are yeah. being made yeah. by the technology mm. for you. Mm. Mm. So it's a very big grey area right now. Mm. It is a very big grey area, but it's also an opportunity. And I want to say, right, when we say human agency, it's not just in terms of the individual user making choices yep. about what to post. Yep. It is also about the individual citizen engaging in conversations. Yep. What can we do to hold tech um, corporations accountable? Yep. How can we all collaborate together yep. to build a safer, technologically mediated yep. space yep. for our interpersonal relationships to flourish? Right. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Avadini, you know, My for pleasure. coming on to the show to share a bit more, you know, really about. Uh, the question of whether true privacy really yeah. exists, you know, on the uh, uh, cyberspace, and really, you know, it's it's a conversation that we need to talk about, you know, yes. and it's constantly being talked about. I have a lot uh, more questions actually. So, yeah. Yeah. So you know, yeah. it's it's hard to answer, right? It is yeah. hard to answer. So hard to answer. Right? Definitely something to think it about. It is, and yeah. I, d I do want to just speak to the audience and say, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry, but very often this happens in my classroom mm. as well, mm. that every time <laughs> someone asks a question, yeah. my answer usually leads to more questions. Yeah. But, you know, if everybody can kind of get involved in that conversation, I think that, you know, we will be able to move to towards a good kind of space. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, for those of you who are watching us at home, again, you know, keep the conversation going. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, right? Uh, and of course, if you want to get in touch with us as well, you know, if you want to keep the conversation going, email us as well. Yeah, mm. DM. And if you have any questions for Dr. Avadani, uh, definitely we'll direct it to her uh, as well. We'll continue with the conversation. Here. I'll be happy to mm. answer yeah. them. Thank you so much, uh, Thank you. Prof. Thank you, Prof. But what is most important, of course, uh, you know, from this saga is that please don't tarnish the good name of our favourite delicacy. Huh? Nasi lemak. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite dish. Mm, moving on to our second favorite. segment, our former media call artist Sharon R recently made headlines for contacting her colleagues after work, after office hours and being reported to HR not once but twice. twice. And actually maybe the colleague just didn't like her. Lah. Yeah. Because you know, why, why go straight to HR? Why not just tell her? Correct. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, the thing is that unless, okay, I'm, I'm guessing that maybe mm. it's like she's the boss. Ah. Or their supervisor. Perhaps. So it would be a very awkward conversation because we certainly can't tell our boss, can you please stop messaging me at 11.30? Although I just said it, but no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Perhaps, or it's just a, it's a cultural thing as well. Mm. Maybe, right? Because yeah. in, in France, it's like that, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's like uh, they're not allowed to. Mm. It's, I think it's illegal, right? Mm, to to correct. message your employees or your, your, your colleagues after yeah. office hours. Yeah. But in Singapore, I mean... It's all a, we, we, you know, in, in this age, it's all mm. about flexible working hours. So there's no strict 9 to 5. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? So for those of you who are watching us at home, let us know, right? Was Sharon Al wrong in what she did? And do you think it was a big deal anyway? Like, yeah. are they making a big deal out of nothing? Yeah, right? So? But whatever it is, this has made us think about other office irks, right? Or pet peeves. That need to office. die. <laughs> that need to die. <laughs> apart say, from need to die. <laughs> texting and getting in touch with colleagues, you know, after office hours. Yeah, because you can just not reply. You can just reply in your own time the next day. Correct, correct, yeah. Is, right? Okay, so my first pet mm. peeve, if I can share, mm. would be meetings that are scheduled at the end of the day. <laughs> Me work meetings that are scheduled at the end of the workday, it doesn't make sense to me. What about meetings at 11am? Can, because that's really <laughs> office hours. That is true, that is true. For me, timing is what? It's the duration of meetings, right? So what's the idea? What's the optimal time for a meeting? <laughs> like, duration for a meeting? We've talked about this, like, not everybody has to say or say contribute to or a contribute, meeting. Right? right. You yes. know, keep it short, keep it sharp, copy, keep it succinct and sweet. Right, and right? Uh, I think you also said something very interesting. Um, uh. If there is no food at the meeting, yep. it should be an email. Exactly, <laughs> correct, right? How you could do it is maybe have a... So there's this thing where there is the planking meeting where you plank and... Uh, which the, Okay, you know what? I'm going to so give So Mr. Muscles is going to show okay. us the, uh, the <laughs> okay, example of a... Oh, oh boy, okay. Okay. 
So we'll try to do this segment. I mean, with for those who planking. don't know what a plank is, you are seriously going to do this whole segment planking? Yeah. Like seriously? Can try, can try. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Let's go. Oh wow! In this case, okay. let's just take our time. <laughs> let's just take our time with this segment. Okay. So, so the peeve is yeah, meetings are too long. So you're gonna look at the. You should have. <laughs> maybe we should have planking meetings, right? So wow, that people will be quick in their meetings. Like, Why don't you do a one-finger push-up right now? Oh, no, I cannot do a one-finger push-up. So oh. that is one. Planking meeting or standing up and meet. Mm, okay? That's right. Yeah. So the other pet peeve is Slowly when... speak slower. Why do you speak so fast? <laughs> speak the other pet peeve is when you open up the door for somebody behind you and they just walks in Showing off. This guy is showing off, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, but yeah. I have said that I agree, okay. So, the, the, and it happens very often in this office. You know, yes. you open doors or someone and it just walks right through. Yep. That one is great. And another one I, that um, I think would mm. irritate you is when your colleague types too loud on the keyboard. <laughs> when your colleague is too aggressive with yes. the keyboard. Yes, I don't understand, Alyssa. Why do you have to aggressively type? I don't. I just have a very noisy <laughs> keyboard, okay? I don't, I don't exert any extra amount of force on the keyboard. Okay. I mean, and also, while we're at it, right, yep. I don't understand why some colleagues... When they listen to music, they have to sing it out for you. I don't get it. Hey, okay. I really don't. I have, in my defense, I have to say I would like to think that I have a very nice singing voice. <laughs> okay, and the last thing, okay, yes. the last thing before, so that you can finally like unplank yourself. Yes. Uh, one pet peeve which I think we both uh, can agree on yep. is when people snack. Uh huh. Maybe they take the last biscuit or whatever. Mm hmm. They don't throw away the packaging. They kind of like put it back on nicely and leave it there on the pantry. Oh yeah. Or if I don't get it. They take a bite and then they put it back. So, yeah, and we've seen that happen. We've we've, we've seen a half bitten, half eaten donut. Uh huh. And it's it's a communal thing. So like usually when we share donuts, we will all like cut it up, right? Yeah. This person like bit into it and then put it back. <sighs> So these are office habits that need to die. Let us know in the comment section below what other office pet peeves you want to see just, you know, die. Oh, flex. Yan, flex. Okay. <laughs> well, done. Good job. Yan, how long was that? My goodness. That was amazing. Okay, so uh, Leo Junkai says, well, mm. Hari Yanto is so sporting. Indeed. Of course, of he course. is a very sporty person. Of course. Oh, boy. He is. Uh, I think someone actually agrees with the content. So Zilj yeah. Dan Tan says, meeting just to go through content that could have been covered in just one email. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, we have Faiza that says, what about contacting employees when you're on medical leave? Uh, that's another pet peeve. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That is. When you're on compassionate leave as well. So uh, yeah. Stephen goes says something uh, in relation to the first segment. He okay. says, it's okay to share some info online, but it's also up to the individual to check and ensure what kind of information they're sharing mm. online. For example, if the material is really of an intimate nature, um, for someone's eye only, mm. then best and safer not to share this kind of material. Hmm. Online. But, but the thing is that I think most people know that. Mm, I yeah. think it's like a select few who ignore all that and share yeah. it anyway. But like what Dr. But Denise would say, right, like you have to understand that interpersonal relationships also have evolved, right? Mm. And uh, people express uh, intimacy in different ways, you know, and mm -hmm. one way could be um, sharing of this intimate. Uh, yeah. So just because they share online. doesn't mean you need to share it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Or if if they share, you know, does it mean that you can share it with other people also? Because you're supposed to be the only intimate mm. uh, audience as yep. well, right? Yeah. Don't share the pictures I send you. <laughs> <laughs> you mean uh, the cat pictures that you send me <laughs> and the game pictures that you send me? The Pokemon pictures. The Pokemon I send you. pictures, right? But whatever it is, uh, like, oh, we have some more people are saying. What is it? Damien Tay, when a colleague stirring the coffee with a spoon loudly, that's everything. <laughs> yes. 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 By the way, the British, when you stir, when you stir your tea or coffee, it's not supposed to touch the cup. Yeah, it's not yeah. supposed to, not supposed to clink, 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 clink. It's just like that. Yeah, just silent right. stir. And then when you drink or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, with a finger. <laughs> but more importantly, let us know, right? What are some of the office pet peeves that you have? Mm. Uh, besides, I, I said it all. I got it all off my chest. Yeah. Tonight. Besides, you know, uh, getting work emails or work calls or work texts after office hours, like uh, what Sharon Al did. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And with that, good. moving on to our next segment, positive vibes.
Okay, uh, of course, you know, there are a lot of bad news uh, in the world. So we just want to share something that is nice, sweet and uh, warm, that warms the cockles of our hearts. Mm. Mm. So for this week's Positive Vibes, it's all about spreading positivity, not obscenity. <laughs> yep, yep. We're talking about the wholesome SG Nasilama Telegram chat. <laughs> and this is the legit one, uh, not the you know naughty one. Yeah. So yeah. this one, you know, if you want any pure, unadulterated nasi lemak content, you know where to go. <laughs> and for once, right, this chat group says what says does what it says on the box. Exactly. Yeah. Sharing of actual nasi lemak pictures mm, and, and the where address to... all. Yeah. yeah. Where is the best nasi lemak for you? Okay, for me, I love Pongo mm. nasi lemak. I love oh. it because I'm all about the the batter of okay. the chicken and also okay. of the chili. Right. So I love Pongo nasi lemak. Right. I like uh, the Bunei Power Nasi Lemak, mm. which I was supposed to take you to, mm. yeah, and we haven't. And uh, in fact, the house, my house downstairs yeah. at Tampere. But it's so good, it's sold out, right? That's yes. why, because right. you want to have it for lunch, but then it's sold out. Yeah, it's sold out. It's really good, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, SG Nasi Lemak, the real one, you guys, the best, you know? Share positivity, not obscenity. Yes. Yeah. And with that, uh, rounding things off on a light-hearted note is... The battle of the best memes, it's a game of memes, no longer Facebook face off. This is because, well, everyone loves memes. Exactly, right? Uh, so, this is the second week that we are doing this now. Mm -hmm. Last week it was a it was tie. A tie. Yeah. A tie. So, basically, what we do instead of uh, trolling through our Facebook posts, on uh, Straits Times for Wittier's comments. Ellie and I were taking up a notch. Mm -hmm. We have throughout the whole internet verse yes, to find the, the best memes. Mm. Right? So we still find three each and then mm. we go head to head and then you guys vote. If you think Harianto's memes are funnier, you type in H. If you think that Ellie's memes that she has picked are funnier, type in A. Mm. Okay, so you go. Do. Okay, so the Let's one try. I chose... Mm. Uh, now I'm not very uh, confident anymore because oh, no. you, you, you my, saw my... my okay. You're like... Oh, no, you're no, 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 not at all. Okay. Okay. Alright, okay. So <laughs> I found this on ah. um, Facebook. Yeah. The toothbrush uh, toothbrush says, I hate mm. my job. And his friend there, the toilet brush. Says, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you better. It's like you think you have a time for right. wait, wait, yeah. <laughs> wait till you have to brush the, the toilet bowl. <laughs> okay, this one I found on uh, Facebook as well. The mannequin. Finally, someone understood the reality. Correct. It's all about being inclusive, yeah. not exclusive. Well, mm. come on lah. Honestly, only 5% of the whole you know, population, I would imagine a small percentage, have that kind of mannequin physique. Like you lah. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, everyone can be like you. Yeah. Correct. So if you think that Ellie's meme is funny, you type in A. If you think Harido's meme is funny, you type in H. Okay, round two. So this one I picked, this meme. So it says that, Therapist, do you often use humour to deflect serious trauma? Me. Thank you. Therapist, I didn't say that was a good thing. Me, what I'm hearing is you think I'm funny. So can you explain to me this meme? I know my life. I explained that you wouldn't get you it. You often use <laughs> humor to deflect your trauma. Thank you. Ah, right. Never. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I got it. Got it? I got it. Got it, uh, I got it okay, uh. Ellie, okay. you go. Yours. So, so mine, this one is from SGAG. Mm. Um, so this is the Malayan photo level. Yeah. And this is the MBS level. Okay, good. Uh. Oh, oh, because they created the MBS. Right, right, right. Right? <laughs> this is so anticlimactic, but yeah. <laughs> so if you think Ellie's meme is funny, you tap in A. If you think Haridu's meme is funny, you tap in H. Okay, okay last round, third round. So okay. I'll go, right? Round three, yes. So this is uh, Preet on Twitter. Ah. And she says, well, you told God to remove the fakes and now your Gucci belt is missing. Oh, so the Gucci belt is fake. Fake lah. <laughs> <laughs> your Gucci gang gang is fake. Gucci gang gang. Okay, mine. This is what I've chosen. There are two types of students. One is outstanding. <laughs> the other one is outstanding. <laughs> Which one were you? Which one were you? The first one, of course. I was probably in between. Uh. In between. I was in, not there. Not in, uh, probably oh, no, one when point. I saw this one, right? I just burst out laughing. You know? And teachers, I know y'all can relate to this. Yeah. It's very good. It's good. <laughs> I, I actually I concede the face. I, I think you should win. <laughs> so if you think Ellie's memes in general are funny, type in A. If you think Harinto should win this uh, whole round, 
type in H. Exactly. Okay, we're going to give you some time to uh, vote. Uh, let's see, we have some comments actually just now coming in. Good, huh? Yeah, we have uh, Amitabh monkeys. says, Very nice chat with Dr. Avadani. Privacy is not only a technological issue, it is a business one. There is nothing in the code that requires Facebook, Google at all to know our personal information in order to provide the services they do. They need this information to make money. So mm. it's business driven, right? Mm. Meng Yang says, Yup, my colleague makes a lot of clinking noise as she drinks and enjoys her drinks. Irritating. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's a thing, you know, because there are different people saying it's about that. When, when their colleagues drink, they are very noisy. Ah. Yeah. Diki Karina says, Crave or Crave Nasi Lemak. Lama. Mm. Meng Yang, hate it when my colleagues or bosses disturb me after work. Ah, mm. interesting. Got so, it. let us know, right? Like we mentioned earlier on, keep the mm. conversation going really about the idea of uh, privacy. That's whether right. true privacy really exists in cyberspace. And uh, when you talk about sharing things, you know, is it uh, the onus is on tech companies? Or is it on screen? you as a user to not share in the first place? Mm. Or, you know, is it on the people who take it and be betray your trust? Exactly, right? Okay, so we're going to close voting mm -hmm. in. Three, two, one, and the winner of Game of Memes is. I think it's you. Yay! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, it was good. I think outstanding one is very good. Yeah, right. You are outstanding! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So, this is the first time for the change that you know, we that, have a winner. Yeah, and that's you. So, mm -hmm. you've, uh, you have a new record. That's, I do have a new record. Are you proud of it? I am. So you're so outstanding. <laughs> the outstanding host. Now that is all we have for you uh, for Hangout this week. For more news and videos, do log on to our website, streetstimes.com. We're also on social media, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. Mm, we're also on our own uh, social media as well. We're on mm. our own Instagram and our uh, email. You can just slide in our DM. Mm, send us memes, email, yeah. anything. Send us pictures of nasi lemak. Mm. Nasi lemak, uh, not obscene ones. Uh, nasi lemak, uh, please like proper nasi lemak. Send please us be wholesome. Think wholesome. Correct. Think wholesome, wholesome right? Uh, but more importantly, of course, we want to again give a shout out to our YouTube viewers and our Twitter viewers as well. Mm. Yeah. Thanks Unfortunately, guys. we can't access. Yeah. So we are not able to kind of like see your comments. Yeah. And, and someone actually commented on YouTube or oh, took mm. Alyssa Wu quite some time to just type, Hi, everyone. My phone is quite laggy, eh, to say. Uh, <laughs> Tose 22, Tose 22. <laughs> tose, the tose, Tose. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we hope you guys have enjoyed uh, Hangout this week. Once again, she is Alyssa. And he is the outstanding Arianto. Goodbye, Goodbye and, and see you next week. week.